Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Good Hello, Jinix. Dr. Bati, how are you today? Did you yes, guys exchange yes. memos? It's we, called telepathy, yes. isn't it? <laughs> it is. Great. How are you? Perfect. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. Good how are you this morning? Oh, yeah. yesterday was, oh my it was, God. It was lovely. It, it was, was our good. digital editor, Demola Ujo's birthday. So it we had a good time. Sad. Happy birthday to him. Was, but you know, lovely. I haven't been around for two days now. So it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of stories that are trending and we have very little time. So let's get to it, my Let's dear. see what we can do with the little time that we have. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Adamu Bukachua, the senator representing Bauchi North, on Monday, set social media buzz after stating during a valedictory session of the Ninth Senate that he often influenced his wife, Zainab Bukachua, a former president of the Court of Appeals' decisions while she was in office, Zainab is the first female to hold the position of president of the Nigerian Court of Appeal. In 2019, she was the chairman of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, but later recused herself from participating in adjudicating petitions filed by Atiku Abubaka, challenging the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari. Well, ahead of the 10th House, her husband, Adamu, revealed that his wife used her position as a judge to favor his colleagues in the Senate. Let's take a listen before we come back for a discussion. At my age, I don't think I will lobby anybody under the sun. I would do the right thing, and I always do the right thing, and sincerely and honestly too. So, I know, I look at faces in this chamber, whom have come to me <clears throat> and sought for my help when my wife was the president of the Court of Appeal. And I'm sure I'm... Uh, um, uh, the single senator, Adam Ahmed Bukacho, I, I, I think I would advise that you just round up and uh, take your seat. Many, many names. We know, we know ourselves. I must say that, okay, to round up, since that's what you want me to do, I will do that. And I must thank particularly my wife, whose freedom and independence I encroached upon while she was in office. And she has been very tolerant and accepted my encroachment and extended her help to my colleagues. Uh, Dissunguish, please, I, I don't think this is a good idea going in this direction. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. Crack it up. A good oh, idea. Hold on. Let us take more reactions to this story. <laughs> it's a very good idea. God catch them. Okay. God catch right. them. Right. Well, a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olisa Agbakuba, has faulted the senator's comment, stating that the comment was a monumental disgrace for the judiciary institutions and that he deserves to be taken up immediately by the authorities and that he has lost three cases presided over by Bukachua. And so the senator's comment seems to suggest why, calling it a blight on his confidence. Well, let me take a reaction. This one uh, is from Chidi. He wrote, Adamu Bukachua so loved his wife that he had to take to the floor of the Senate to announce that she was a corrupt judge. <laughs> well, all right, in the same vein. A senator representing Imo West, Rocha Sokorocha, during the valedictory session, said that the return of former Senate President Ahmad Lawan to the upper legislative chamber remains a mystery, all in a video that has now gone viral. Rochas asked Lawan to teach him how he returned to the Senate after losing the presidential ticket of the All Progressives Congress. Let's take a look. Again, we shall all stand to say Nigeria is a great country. And to those of you, our colleagues, including you, Mr. Senate President, you know you are a very smart politician. How you came back is yet another political book to discuss. Sorry? How you came back is another chapter in our political history. How I came back from where? How you returned to the Senate as a senator will open another chapter of great discussion in our political book. 
because I was there in the field with you running for president. <laughs> I never knew how you were able to meander and return and leave some of us. Next time, you must teach me how to do that. It was a torturous journey because we had to go through the courts. I didn't even appeal. All right, confession for confession. confession. What can we do here? I will start with Bokachua yeah. about his wife. What Oji. do you make of that story, really? Oji, I'm very happy this is happening. What a great time to be alive. God is a Nigerian. You can see what's happening underneath. Yeah. Sort of a very damning cover. If we're a sane country that truly wants to fight corruption, by now the authority should be calling him to expatiate more on those colleagues that were helped. Mm. He can do it to get away with it, but what about others that their wives are not judges? Must we all go and marry judges now because we want to get something? And I'm happy Rocha Sokrocha also raised that case yeah. of the Senate. Even the incumbent Senate president, didn't the case go to court? Didn't the incumbent Senate president run for presidency? <laughs> and we know how the case went through courts. You see, Nigeria has become a theater of the absurd. Overnight, when some people love you, you have done no wrong. But the moment you are at loggerheads with them, they will use everything to fight you. All of a sudden, Nigerians act like we don't see what happens. We don't see what happened in the process. All of a sudden, we are forgotten. But you see, like Rocha Zokorocha said, that would be another political booklet to be opened. Mm -hmm. It would be on record the role our courts played. And we keep seeing all of that. But you see, I keep saying something, Oji. It is righteousness that we ex exalt a nation. Mm. And we are seeing them confess their sins out. Absolutely. Until we build a Nigeria. Currently, like they say on social media, they play. Yeah. We they play. Olisa Obakoba described it as a monumental <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> he wants the senator to be arrested, Dr. Avati. Okay, what is my response to this? Uh, senator Adamu Bukachua mm -hmm. is uh, 83 years old. So I don't know what happens when people get to that age. May we all reach that age and yes. even go beyond. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't understand why a man will publicly throw his wife under the bus like yes. that. So, but he's 83 years old. Some other people will give his uh, conduct some other interpretations. That's number one. Number two, I think he's on his own except what he has said is corroborated. I think the excitement, the objection, is because he's the husband of, uh, uh, you know, Justice uh, Bukachua. Well, it's a medieval concept under the doctrine of the unity of spouse, that you cannot separate a man from his wife. So if a man says, well, I was influencing my wife, then, you know, people will say, hey, he must have done it, okay? But he has, he has to be taken into account to prove it. Yes. To corroborate his own evidence. I don't know if he's a, a monogamist. Okay, it may be a serious matter. You may say, oh, husband and, and wife, they are one. But if he's a polygamist, the concept of the doctrine of uh, unity of spouse will not apply in a polygamous setting. So if uh, Justice Bukachua is not, uh, is not his only wife, you know, there is no unity where you have uh, two wives, three wives, four wives. You cannot say you are of the same mind. You know, the woman may, may, may be doing her own thing contractually and all of that. So I, I think, in other words, I'm saying that Justice Bukachu, uh, Senator Bukachua's submission should be, uh, you know, uh, taken with a pinch of salt, except the matter is investigated and there is a corroboration. Absolutely. Number three, apart from saying it was an irresponsible outing for Senator uh, Bukachua, I think it's most unfortunate that at 83 years old, a man that is uh, supposed to be a, a man of wisdom, uh, since in Africa we connect wisdom with age, we just throw his uh, wife's entire career Unfortunate. Adrift. Yeah. Like that. Where is That's wisdom? Exactly what happened. And which was Ahmad Lawan was That's telling exactly him, don't go in that direction. No. Don't go in that direction. Ahmad Lawan is a much younger man, but he seemed to have made a wiser uh, intervention in the matter. Because to tell the truth, if you look at the career of Justice uh, uh, Bukachua, Zainab Bukachua, uh, that's her name, she had a distinguished career on the bench, well-educated, 
And all the uh, cases that she handled, up to the time she became president of the Court of Appeal, she, she acquitted herself honorably. When it appeared in the uh, 2019 case, uh, presidential election petition tribunal case, that people were saying, oh, she had collected six billion. She came out openly and said, look, I will stand down from, from this case. Not because I will not do justice. So mm -hmm. the, the allegation, she said, you know, had nothing to do because she was clear in her mind that she would deliver justice as due. But because doubt had been raised, she honorable, honorably decided to step aside. And she retired from uh, the bench uh, March uh, 2020. Okay, and she had a great, you know, departure as the first female Nigerian to be president of the Court of Appeal of Nigeria. And then two years later, her husband goes to the valetry session of the Senate and he was saying, I influenced my wife. I, uh, <laughs> you are missing Dr. Abbas's <laughs> impression, director. You should have well, seen it. Uh, but, I but as a standard practice here, yeah, I think the uh, irresponsible nature of Senator Bukachua's uh, statement yeah. about a woman from he, he, whom he has three sons yeah. will have been shown to him, will have been uh, explained to him. Uh, but, you know, standard Nigerian behavior, he will come now. He will say, oh, he was quoted out of contest. Mm. Or, or, or he will say, or, or he will say that, uh, you know, those who recorded him uh, misrepresent, misrepresented him. Our prayer in this country, may our daughters not meet some of these men who will come and turn your career upside down. Amen. With careless talk. Amen. And, and, right. and he owes his wife an apology. He owes us an, a, a, an explanation. Yes. And those who have been saying that his, his uh, allegations should be further investigated should go ahead and do so. Right. But he's on his own yeah. in this matter. All right. All right. My next story, you did have um, CEO of Airpeace Airlines, Alan Onyema, just now. So I'll breeze through this story, Ayo, and then you make a quick comment before we take our final story. Uh, several allegations made by the former Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, on Sunday, while responding to the controversy surrounding Nigeria Air, have generated reactions from a cross-section of Nigerians. Sirika made the allegations on This Day Live. One out of the allegations was that the chairman of the House Committee on Aviation, Nolim Naji, asked for 5% shares of Nigeria Air to be given to him in an attempt to discredit Naji's earlier assertion that Nigeria Air is a fraud. Sirika stated that he had rejected Naji's request because the bidding process for Nigeria Air at the time was over, but that the 5% held by the federal government will eventually go to the market and that he could present his bid at the time. I think I need to respond to my friend who said it was a fraud. Uh, right Honorable Unalim, the former chairman of House Committee on Aviation. Um, what, he, what I said to him in private, I will say it now. He asked me, just to give him some comfort, he asked me to please, please, please indulge him and give him 5% of the airline. That 5%, what I told him in private is that it belongs to the owners. And I believe they've still been willing to offer him if you have the money. So it is not me giving it. I didn't get involved. It was a bidding process. And I'm very sure that they will have reserved 5% for him and his people according to him. So he should approach them uh, to, to get his 5% that he needed. The chairman of the House Committee on Aviation has debunked the claim made by the former minister. Well, in a statement released on Sunday, Naji stated that Sirika is a drowning man, struggling to grab anything on his way to survive the barrage of attacks he has been receiving since the controversial unveiling ceremony of the so-called Nigeria Air. Nolim added that it is not strange that Sirika came up with the scrupulous allegations against him because he had remained consistent in demanding that the minister followed due process. Well, uh, let me take a tweet. This is from Joseph. He wrote, this is the tried culture of corruption in Nigeria. Throw counter accusation at your accuser. I think an independent investigation needs to be carried out on the Nigeria Air project. Was the Association of Airline Owners of Nigeria who opposed the project also seeking 5%? Well, you know, the minister has come under fire um, for admitting during the interview that the aircraft brought into Nigeria was a chartered Ethiopian aircraft, when in actual fact, he previously claimed during a report with Channel TV 
that three aircrafts were purchased by Nigeria Air and that one out of the three purchased would arrive the country ahead of the said unveiling ceremony. Friday, in two days, the Nigeria airplane will land in Nigeria, part of the processes to commence the operation. We will on that day unveil this aircraft uh, with delivery and everything in Nigeria's colors, belong to Nigeria Air, and we will proceed to go and do the retrofit and bring back those airplanes. All right. Did you hear him say that the <laughs> airline was belonging to Nigeria Air? This was on Friday that he made that comment. I mean, I think a few days, two days before the, May 26, yes. the unveiling ceremony. And previously he had claimed that, you know, it was going to be Nigerian Air craft that yes. would arrive Nigeria. So what really happened here? I mean... Well, well you know, o OJ, a number of questions after the interview with Mr. Alan Oyem, and by the way, I would yes. encourage you to watch it because it raised so many things that are quite disheartening, um, some of them quite shocking, or maybe not too surprising because we, we understand the way these things play out. But another question I want to ask is that what part of the interview with Senator Hadi Sirika, Sirika was true? Because first of all, we found out that the um, aircraft he had promised that it was going to be Nigeria Air, and he said, no, no, it was just an unveiling. You know, we took it out of context. Second, Honorable Nolly has come out to say that he didn't ask for the 5% right or reply. Today, Mr. Alan Noyema debunked a number of claims that he had made. But one of the things I'll just highlight from that interview mm -hmm. is this, and that is the fact that why would the Minister of Aviation set out to discredit an industry that he was supposed to be protecting and investing in? Why don't we, why are our chief marketers not looking forward to bringing out the best out of the aviation industry mm -hmm. and seeing the potential? It seemed like an attack on not just Airpiece and his person, but on the local aviation industry. You are the minister of aviation. Your job, your task is to ensure that the industry works and you grow the industry. But unfortunately, what has happened again and again with the former aviation minister is that he discredits the industry. I do think as has been recommended, that an in independent investigation is carried out. And yes. perhaps there should be a suspension on Nigeria. I mean, also, there are some people that have called for the investigation. I believe Code also called for the investigation. I think the topic, the real question here is, who are these shareholders? Who are these people that Hadi Sirika has said has invested in this uh, Nigeria Air airline? I wish we had a uh, little time. I wanted to announce uh, Hilda Bachi's uh, uh, Guinness World Record win, but I hope we can talk, discuss that tomorrow. Well, thank you all for a great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.